I come from a very small town in East Tennessee, population 3,000, snuggled in the Appalachian Mountains. In 1983, I went 30 miles east to Johnson City, the big city, 22,000 people, to go to college at East Tennessee State University, home of the fighting buccaneers. Get bucked up! <laughs> Why don't you get bucked up? Because everyone knows there's a problem with rogue pirates roaming the Great Smoky Mountains, right? <laughs> and I was your average college student. I was broke. I was uh, majoring in psychology, but I sang for the East Tennessee State University Chamber Choir, directed by Dr. Charles Jenrette. And one day in choir rehearsal, he said, We're going to Europe. Our little 16-member choir had been chosen by the country of Yugoslavia <laughs> to come and do a tour for two weeks. And to make it seem a little bit better, we spent two days in Venice, Italy, and two days in Vienna, Austria. Coming from a small town, I imagined myself being sophisticated. <laughs> and being a European traveler, I thought I would eat Bavarian cream in Austria, I would sip espresso in St. Mark's Square. I would do whatever they do in Yugoslavia. <laughs> so I raised my hand. I'm in. But the only thing is we had to raise $2,000 per person to be able to go. So being a broke college student, I did what everyone else did. I went to my parents. My mom was sympathetic, but my stepfather said, you want to go, you find a dough. So I started doing the math. And though I worked part-time at the drive through at the local Burger King, it wasn't going to be enough. So, like Greece, I started a six-month of austerity. <laughs> so I didn't go out buying drinks anymore. I only went to frat parties or beer busts. Uh, I started clipping coupons from the local newspaper for the $2 chicken box at KFC. And I even returned my newly purchased black satin parachute pants to Chess King <laughs> with my newly acquired visa. And when I returned the pants, they gave me cash. $35 in cash. And I started to think, I know what I'll do. So I went to every department store in the mall and I signed an application for any credit card that they would give me. And 10 to 15 business days later, I got all these credit cards in the mail. And I jumped in my 1980 Chevy Love truck, and I drove to the mall, and I went to J.C. Penny, and I bought the most expensive pair of penny loafers I could. And then I went over to Radio Shack, and I bought one of those brand new spanking VHS video recorders. And then I went to Sears and Robux, and I bought me a Black & Decker chainsaw. <laughs> Then I turned around and went back to each store and returned them for cash. Now I was cooking. So I went over to the First American Bank and I paid off that Chevy Love truck. And with that car title, I got a personal loan with my truck as collateral. And I was up to $1,500. I was only 20 years old, but I had already mastered the financial systems that would bring the prosperity of the 80s and the collapse of Europe. <laughs> but I sat down and I did the math, and I still needed $500. I didn't know what to do. And I sulked all the way to choir rehearsal thinking, I'm going to have to tell Dr. Jenrette I can't go. That's when the miracle of 1985 happened. <laughs> Dr. Jenneret got up and he said, Foreigners coming to town. I thought, well, so woohoo, someone from out of the country is coming to town. He goes, the band. <laughs> Not the 1980s American British rock band with <laughs> anthems such as Jute Box Hero. <laughs> They're coming to town and we're going to sing with them. <gasps> yes. <laughs> So two weeks later, we go to the Freedom Hall Civic Center in Johnson City, Tennessee, and we have rehearsal, not band practice, because as Dr. Jean Rant would say, athletes practice, artists rehearse. We rehearsed with the band, and that night we were fitted with these long white uh, choir.
wire ropes. And during rehearsal, I must have made an impression on them because they gave me a tambourine. So the last song of the night, there we were, and as the music started to swell towards the chorus, we all marched onto stage, and I went to my place downstage next to my microphone, and the music starts to swell, and I started to sing, I want to know what love is. <laughs> and I'm shaking my tambourine, and I'm shaking my booty, and the guitarist comes over, and he starts playing a solo right beside me. And he's playing away, and I'm shaking that tambourine, and I'm looking out in the audience, and they're all looking up at me just like right now. <laughs> And I thought, this is great. The next day in choir rehearsal, Dr. Jimrat says, it was a paying gig. We have been paid so much money that it paid for a flight from RFK to Belgrade. So I got to go to Europe. I got to sip the espresso. I got to eat the Bavarian cream. But I also got to go to Dubrovnik. I got to go to Mostar and see the bridge. I got to go to Sarajevo. I got to see this country before it was destroyed 10 years later with war. When I got back to the United States, I was broke. I had a lot of credit cards. I had a lot to pay back. Black and Decker chainsaw, $250. Penny loafers, $375. A country boy going to Europe? Priceless. <laughs>